Colombian drug lord. Perfect um, timing, Mike. We just went live. <laughs> How's it going, everybody who's following along? We are here with Mike Yagley, Jose Miraflor, Sir Jose Miraflor. <laughs> and up, everybody? we are playing a little game called Around the Green. You can see it in the top right-hand corner. The way this is going to work is pretty easy. We're going to ask these guys a series of questions. Each one will have 60 seconds to a minute to debate the topic. And then we're going to throw it to you guys to decide who won that round. There'll be four questions and then a speed round, which has four questions. And depending on how this goes, we're going to actually give away a Cobra driver. These two guys don't know that yet. I just, nice. I happen to have one behind me. Uh, yeah, over there, my personal driver, we're going to be giving that away to one of the people who participates. So a used, a used driver. Yes. <laughs> don't worry. The sweet spot's been untouched. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to kick this off and Again, for those joining us right now, we have Mike Yagley. He's the one that says Mike Yagley at the top. We have Jose. He's the one who says Jose. Both of Mike Yagley's got a uh, kind of a Tony Stark Colombian drug lord thing going on right now. Jeez. Hey, Yagley, how many times did you have to dye that beard to get it to not be gray? Wow, the personal attacks have started already. Jose, could you point your camera down a little bit. We can't quite actually see you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are those oh. glasses prescription or can you actually see the screen? I can see you so well, Jose. <laughs> okay, we're gonna kick this one off with question number one. And we're gonna start with Jose here, the graphics coming up on the screen. Who's gonna win their first major first? Bryson DeChambeau or Ricky Fowler? Jose, kick us off. But, you know, that's a great question. I mean, they're both great players and they're both ours. So, you know, whatever side I pick, the other guy, because I know you're probably watching, don't be offended. This is all about, um, for me, kind of like a little bit of money balling, right? So I would, I would say it's going to be Ricky. And here's why. And in the years he's been on tour, he's been on tour a lot longer. He's played in 34 majors, nine of them top tens. In the uh -huh. majors... Right, he has. Look at him total, throwing stats at you, Yagley. Yeah, he has nine PGA Tour victories, five of them on the PGA Tour. Excuse me, nine Tour victories, not five on the PGA Tour. When you look at his stats in the majors, in one year he finished top five in all of them as well. Right, so he has uh, a second place in the U.S. Open, a second uh, second place in the Open Championship, uh, a second place with a, just one stroke behind Patrick Reed. What was that? Twenty eighteen. Yes. So he has some really close wins in these majors. He's battle tested. He's had a lot of close calls. He deals with adversity well. Uh, he stays composed. He, he, he's going to make mistakes. They all do. And I, I like the way he stays composed and stays in it. He gets over it quickly. And you need that in majors. He's a great one putter. He's one of our one, one, best one putt stats on tour. He gets up and down when he needs to, and he makes those birdies. So that's my quick minute, Ricky Fowler. Ricky, you're my boy. That's strong, Mike. Give us your rebuttal to that. That was, Jose, that was a, a pretty good argument. Um, let me tell you why it's going to be Bryson Aldrich DeChambeau, also known as bad. Um, let's just talk about apparel, okay? So Hogan's <laughs> driver cap, right? Hogan won nine majors. Um, pineapple cap and untucked shirts, zero so far. Um, <laughs> his, 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 Bryson's quest for perfection is what it takes to win a major. You know, he's part physicist, he's part shark, he's part Charles Atlas. Um, that's a lethal combination. And for all you people who don't know who Charles Atlas is, just look it up. Okay. Um, and I would say from a, a major standpoint, like at the masters, Tigers is his buddy. I mean, Tiger's going to get him around that course. And at some point, Bryson's going to start thinking the ball in the hole because he's such a powerful thinker. So he, the masters, I think would be, it's his first pick to win. I think it'd be the first one he would win. Um, U.S. Open's a great opportunity for him because we know how the USJ really loves Bryson. I mean, they've got a super tight relationship. Um, so that's a strong possibility. Um, and let's get right down to it. He's already won two pretty major championships, an NCAA championship and a U.S. amateur. So the kid knows how to win. So that is strong. 
Yeah. So it's gonna be people Bryson. following along, everybody go on the side and vote and let me know what you come up with. And then we are going to declare a winner here. Are you going to do this now? Yeah, they're voting right now. Right now. Right now. Can I throw out a couple other fun ones? Sure. Um, there's only been one winner shorter than Ricky in the past 10 years. So he's got about a one in 40 chance of winning just based on height alone. Well, let me let me wow. throw this one out for you. Uh, yep. You know, I told you Ricky's stats on majors, and Bryson's been on tour yep. now since 2017, so he's not a newcomer to the tour. Masters tied for 21, PGA tied for 33, Open Championship tied for 51. His best finish is tied for 15th at the U.S. Open, so that's why I based it on stats. With Ricky finishing so well, I bet on Ricky. Now, if the Masters was happening in April, like it should have this week. Right, it should be happening right now. I do have a bet on Bryson. It's oh. a big, big steak dinner at uh, Ruth Chris that he would win this tournament or play better than my boy Ricky. So, because I know how and bad we really have a winner for round one. The winner, Jose Miraflor. Woo! Who is your daddy, Agley? <laughs> so, way to go, Jose. <laughs> you are up one. We're going to move on to the second question. And this one is a great one for you too, because it, you know, we have some designers here. We have product guys and, and real support. Like both of you guys, you can, your titles can say whatever they want. Both you guys are product guys. So variable versus one length. Give us your mm. background. Yagley, you're up first. All right. So I'm going to go one length. Um, I tell you, putting the ball in one place for all your full swings just makes sense. Um, when we started developing that system, uh, we were quite surprised a few things that came out. We knew that players were going to hit their long irons better and they could just got more consistent contact in the center of the face. What we didn't realize, and it was kind of a happy accident or serendipity, was they actually saw improvement in contact all the way through the set. So they go to the five iron, they hit it a lot better. They go back to the nine iron, even though it's longer than their standard nine iron, their consistency of contact went way up. So honestly, they hit the ball better through the entire set. And we thought that in the very beginning, it was probably going to be about 25% of all of our one length, all of our iron sales would be one length in the models that it was offered, it ended up being about 50%, almost 60% in the first year. And I think it settled in at about 40%. Um, and let's be honest, uh, we look at the data, if you look at the Arcos data, we've looked at all of our player data, and between the four, five, and six iron, there's just not much difference for a lot of players. And if we give them a one length club that allows them to hit it more consistently, they'll see better gapping. Um, I'll throw this How one out too. With Iron Man. Yeah. We'll go back out to uh, Bryson DeChambeau. Um, he's got a winning tour percentage right now of 5.05% which is way better than the average tour player. So I, I put that out as a, one last piece of data. It's one guy, but he's out there kicking butt playing one leg clubs. Jose, Hose? rebuttal? Really good, Yagley. Well done. I agree with all your points. One length is, is great. And most people can benefit with that simplicity in their game, simplicity in swing. I, I think the variable length is the way to go for most people. And I say that because most people – may not have enough launch or speed to get those long irons up in the air to get the consistent distance gappings. While they hit it more centered, you still have to have the launch and the speed to get those distance gaps to be 10 yards, 13 yards, like you enjoy in your shorter irons. That's the reason why we don't make one lengths for slower swing speeds today. And a lot of golfers are slower swing speeds. Wedges, a lot easier to talking use. talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> wedges are much easier to use and be successful with, with variable length. They're shorter. Um, you're able to hit lower shots into the greens that stop and spin. Yagley is one of your most famous shots, one of your favorite shots to hit. You have to have a slightly steeper descending, descending angle of attack. You need that with shorter wedges. In the history of golf, like back when you know Yagley was born in the 20s, there were one length, use, one length irons back then. Um, and then they were brought out again in the 80s. And today, Bryson has made them famous. They are great for certain people. Um, but I think in, in the end, variable length wins. If you're looking for distance off the tee, 
You're not going to want to hit a seven iron like four iron. We'll ask Yagley, you know, what he uses off the team with the long iron soon, and we'll see what that is. Uh, currently, okay. he- everybody go in and vote on who you have. It was almost <laughs> as if both of you guys were arguing with both sides. Obviously, a Yagley, product, guys. Yagley, what irons do you place, variable or one length? I rest my case, counselor. <laughs> oh, he can't hear me now. <laughs> yeah. Jose, didn't you have one length gloves in the bag for a long time? I did. I played twenty six yeah. rounds with them. Yeah, I thought when so. I kept choking down on the sh- on the wedges to hit wedge shots and it hit me in the shirt, I knew I was too short in stature to play one length. And and that's why I had I to go there play. before you did, Yagley. I would go. I would go one length in all of your full swing irons. So let's say a full swing forearm to a full swing pitching wedge, and then you get kind of funky with your wedges after that. I would progress them after that. That's yeah. a very popular build. You know, and our best yeah. players in the building, a couple of them have a uh, variable length to nine iron. They go one length. I will give yeah. you that. Okay, we're going to announce a winner here, and in a shocking move, Mike Yagley. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. We're going to question three. And this is a fun one because I know you guys are fond of both. We're going to kick this off with Jose. Ooh. Speed zone versus extreme. Well, this one's great because we actually use the opposite, right? We I do use it extreme, and Yagley does use um, standard. So I'm going to pick extreme. Yeah. Um, the reason I like it, I mean, it's the most forgiving driver we've ever made. Could be arguably the most forgiving driver ever made in golf. Um, and when you think about how much more forgiving it is versus the standard driver, it is 25% more forgiving than the standard SC driver, more stable in that, in that sense. Uh, when you make it a tour length where we build it one inch shorter and put even heavier weights in the back, it becomes almost 30% more stable on off-center hits. And all of us hit balls that are off-center. And hitting fairways is super important. Here's the stats for your boy, Bryson DeChambeau. When he hits a fairway, his stats of hitting greens is like 90%. The moment you wow. miss a fairway, it drops down to a much smaller number, probably starting in the three, 30 percentile range. So it's important nice. to hit fairways. So that's why I want a more forgiving driver, um, a driver that's still long because it's a long hitting driver, the extreme. Wow, that was really well done, Jose. Mike, well said, Jose. Well, okay, so I, I've got a personal uh, investment in the standard or the more traditional shaped SZ in that it was born from the F9. And Clayton Evans, one of the best club head designers on the planet. Uh, he and I work he works on that. for you guys, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> we put so much performance in that F9, which became the SZ, right? It was the the father of the SZ uh, in terms of really good aerodynamics, uh, great mass properties. Uh, a tailpipe. A more, it has a tailpipe. A tailpipe, yes. It's just sexy as hell. Um, a little more traditional top-down shape. Uh, allows you to work the ball a little bit for the players who want to work a little bit right to left. Uh, two weights for adjustability. Uh, you can adjust swing weight, of course, but then you can also move the weights front and back to tweak the trajectory. Let's say you want to just bring this, the launch down a little bit. You move that weight to the front position. Um, and, you know, it's not just a point and shoot sort of driver. Um, my buddy there, Jose Miraflor might need a little bit more forgiveness, right? And I get oh, it. Oh, ouch! I, I've, I, yeah, I've, I've watched it. I mean, it's okay. We all get ouch. older. Hose. It's not a big deal. You know, that's an entire um, glass of vodka right yes, there. Mm-hmm. Might have been. I'm uh, biting my tongue right now. I know, but here's the funny thing. But host, okay, let's be honest. Host still kicks my ass on the golf course. Okay, he's one of the best players I've ever met. Uh, when it comes to crunch time, that's why he's called a little rat. Um, but he did step into the extreme which is fine. That was a personal choice. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so overall, between great aerodynamics, a great look, great mass properties, it's plenty forgiving enough and being able to work it. The standard SZ is a great driver for most players. Okay, people, you've heard it. Give us your vote, Jose or Mike. And the, win- the winner of this question is going to take the lead two to one here. So uh, who do you got? 
Jose, when you tested both, what made you go to extreme? Was it just the extra forgiveness? Uh, yeah, you know, my miss um, is slightly toe. And all the years I've been playing golf, um, my miss is a right to left. And it, it can be a low snapper if I'm going at it too hard and I hit it on the toe. What I find with the extreme is when I hit it in the same spot, it is still um, a lot straighter with a softer hook to it or softer draw to it than it would be than you would expect. And that won me over right away. And they're both very long from the center. They're both, you know, mm -hmm. solid. But when I miss it on the toe and, you know, sometimes the pressure can get to you or you're just having a bad day. The I, internet, I'll Jose, nobody fairways. misses here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so this one is really close. Uh, it looks like it's going to go to Jose on this one. They like the forgiveness. So, uh, Jose picking up the big W right there. We are going Sweet on choice. We are going on to question four. Could Captain America know? versus Iron Man. Drivers. They are both they, great drivers. This one is rather unique, yeah. too, because I know you guys are on different sides of the fence here, too. So, yep. long irons versus hybrids. Mike, kick us off. Oh, this one's really easy for me. That SZ four iron is magical. Um, it is uh, literally really close, actually, to like Ben Hogan's one iron. The Ben Hogan's one iron was a 17 degree one iron. That four iron's 19 degrees. And I love putting that thing on a peg and just whacking it. Um, Hose and I, Hose and I both, yeah, both, Hose and I both witnessed something awesome with, uh, uh, Ricky two years ago with the F9 four iron. He, he had that in the back at, for a long time. Yeah. He was at the media event and he's just whacking four irons and he's hitting high. He's hitting it low. He ends up hitting a whole bucket of them. He turns around and he goes, can, can I put this in the bag? We're like, you're Ricky Fowler. You can put anything you want in the bag. And he interchanged that four yeah. iron with the five wood through the year. Um, and I don't know if you saw the event where he, he had a microphone in his face and somebody said, Hey Ricky, are you playing a game improvement for iron? And he goes, yeah, I guess I am. Um, it's just a phenomenal choice because you can hit it off the turf. You can hit it off the tee. Um, it's, it's something that for a lot of players, a, a hybrid tends to kind of go left. This thing's not going to go left. It's going to go up. It's going to get out. The beauty of that design too is super low CG, super forgiving, it's just a really easy iron to hit. So I highly recommend if you're looking for a long iron to put in the bag, that SC4 iron is magical. Wow, that was uh, very convincing. Host, what do you got for a rebuttal there? I, you know, yeah, I agree. I mean, I have that four iron in my bag. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if I had to pick between a three iron and a hybrid, it's going to be a hybrid all day. Let me explain to you yeah. why. You know, a hybrid gives you launch more launch than a stronger lofted iron is going to be. So given the same lofts, hybrids are going to launch higher. And for most people, launch means so many great things, more distance. It's going to be a better descending That's angle a good point, for the yeah. golf ball. It's going, to, it's going to stop on greens that that iron that you're hitting is going to roll right through. And then you, you talk about uh, more forgiveness. It's a much more forgiving setup than an iron. So when you're trying to hit long shots in towards a green, you want to be near the green if you miss it. If you're not at the pin, you want to be on the green. If you're not on the green, you want to be near it. And hybrids are just more forgiving to get you that. And finally, more speed. I mean, hybrids are built a little yeah, bit longer. That's a good point. So you're going to carry some more ball speed with that to be able to get you that distance, um, especially if you're using a one-length four iron off the tee, eggs. Wow, that, that's, <laughs> that's tough to go. Okay, guys, give us a vote. Jose with the hybrid, Mike with the irons. What do you have to say? I think you put them both in the bag. Mm. Yeah, and, Like and, I said, I Josh, have both. And, and, that's cheating. And Josh, <laughs> you're not cheating. You're not winning. <laughs> Spoken uh, like my politician friend. And I, did, I was referencing that SZ4 iron, which you know has the Bruce Lee technology. Oh, which, no. Yeah, Bruce Lee technology kicks, is important. Bruce, it kicks everybody's butt. That's why we made that thing. Um, oh, wow. This is a landslide. We're going to go ahead and call this one Mike Yagley. A landslide. Oh, wow. That's, That's the internet, nice. Jose. They do not the like hybrids on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a good I, thing I, we don't say cavity back versus muscle back. Whoever had yeah, cavity or back. Yeah, forge versus, versus cast. Gasp. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay. Nice job, guys. It's time for the speed round. Ooh. Oh, that was fun. That We're was... going to have some fun here. First up, and remember, they have one sentence to answer. And if there needs to be a rebuttal, there can be a rebuttal. But one <laughs> sentence. First question. Going to Jose, best pizza topping. I mean, there's one pizza that everywhere around the world everybody can get get down with and have, and that's pepperoni, man. You got to have pepperoni at least on your pizza. There could be a ton more, but if you don't at least have pepperoni, what's wrong with you? Yagley? Yeah, I'm going to quote my son, Hudson, that Jose knows really, really well. Meat. I want meat on my pizza, Daddy. <laughs> As much as you can put on there. Well, since that was a cop-out answer, we're going to give it to Jose. Three to two. <laughs> you should have said cheese, Yagley. You probably would have won. Wow. <laughs> okay, second question. You have a choice between a first-class ticket with a stop on the way to the East Coast or a coach ticket nonstop. What are you choosing and why? Mike, go ahead. Nonstop. I want to get there. And <laughs> I'm freaking skinny. I have no problems. Got a little. And laptop. to be honest, I'm you're looking. not. Re- yeah. You're rarely on time, and making one flight is better than two. <laughs> I didn't need your help, pal. But thank you, <laughs> Jose. I mean, who's gonna choose a stop? <laughs> What? What? what kind of that's just he won by the coin toss right there okay i'm gonna make a stop in tampa florida and i'm gonna go see morgan babbitt because she's awesome oh There's my she's stop. not a judge oh, jose you lost on principle geez. oh but everybody on this channel loves morgan more than they like you josh so that is true oh, that's true uh, okay I have, it is I have three a to three. Oh. next question <laughs> netflix versus HBO's library of shows. Who's Jose? So is your first Man, it's got to be HBO. I mean, Game of Thrones, um so many great great shows on HBO. You can search Mike's them. Mike's trying out for the time. Sopranos right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm on. HBO all the way. Okay, Mike, Netflix? Oh, no, I'm going off the reservation. So <laughs> I got twin seven-year-olds, dude. No, get this. Disney's He's going Netflix. Disney Channel. No, I'm not even going Disney Channel. I'm going Looney Tunes. I'm going Tom and Jerry. And my daughter, God bless her, is totally into Johnny Quest, the original series, all three seasons. Daddy, can we watch some more Johnny Quest? So she we'll get Netflix. Yeah, we'll get Netflix probably a year or so from now when they can start watching some stuff. Jose, you just took the lead four to three because you answered the question. Yep. yep. I knew it. You know, he's an engineer that thinks outside the box. Final, final question. Unless it's a tie, in which case I'll have to come up with something on the spot. Best fast food breakfast. And I qualify this by saying it must have a drive-thru. Mike, go. It's got to be McDonald's. It's got variety. It's got everything that all four people in my car need at any moment. That's a very good point. Jose? Wow. That is a good one, Yags. That was on my mind. But because I love Southern food, Chick-fil-A. If you haven't had a Chick-fil-A breakfast oh. sandwich Whoa. or a Chick-fil-A <laughs> or a Chick-fil-A <laughs> scramble, you are missing out. Chick-fil-A oh. all the way by Jose. Boom. He oh, actually boy, like, knows you won that round. No. <laughs> But that's not available nationwide. I think I he just, didn't say nationwide. He just said best <laughs> breakfast or on Sundays oh. for that matter. Oh my God! Are you really going to give it to him? I think I have to. Oh, the wow. winner of the first episode, since I'm going to convince these guys to come back, of Around <laughs> the Green is Jose Miraflor. He does not get that cup over in the top right hand corner. No, if your victory. Oh no! This. Why, Josh? This. Why? Days. Sorry. Remove this the days. remove the trophy. Oh, With my. team hackers. Sorry, pal. What is that? Oh. Well, to oh, all my yeah. brethren the out cup. there from Team Paradise, that cup will be ours. Oh, yes, it will. And I know that that's a nice trophy you have there, and you guys have 
beat us three times to one now on the Paradise side. We're coming after you. And you're not the only one with the trophy, Yags. Here's one for me. Now, this one's a little tarnished. I, I need to polish it. But uh, this has been in existence since 1999. This is the actual Industry Cup trophy, the original one, Yagley, where all of us from the industry competed in teams on. And I captained a team that won in 2000, 2002, 2004. Um, at those times, we were at different companies, and the company that I beat were – were, were you on that team, Yax? Uh, I don't know, Hoss. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we well, want to thank yeah. Jose and Mike for coming yeah. on the show. We're going to do this again in the coming weeks. We're all cooped up and crazy. Um, my, I mean, Jose's drinking vodka right out of a glass right now. On ice. Um, it's on ice. It's on ice. I, I appreciate that. We're going to sign off now. Stay tuned to the forum thread. If you followed this along, we're going to have an, a way that you can win my driver right back there. It's the one with the head cover on it. It's got a UST right. Mamiya shaft in there. And uh, we're going to let you know how to win that. It's obviously going to be you're going to have to have paid attention to this. So for Mike or Tony Stark or Tony Soprano Jr. Jr., <laughs> Jose, our champion today, thank Woo! you guys. Thanks, Josh. And thanks, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Uh, 